Ah. Ugh. If you're not the kind of person that can watch 90 segments of music and not get bored from it, then this list was probably a waste of time for you. But if you care, I appreciate it, and I will not tie this cord around your legs while you're asleep. In all seriousness, these are the 10 most absolute perfect tracks I could find in the main series. Some of these are on here for being epic, others are here for being beautiful, some are even here for personal reasons. So what do I think are the 10 most super effective tracks Game Freak has to offer? Let's get to it. Let's just see what I did there. This is super effective. What? Do you have sunburn? Sinnoh you know, is too cold in some places, and, and it had dawn. But what it got right, it got right very well. And Route 216 is a perfect example of that. The track starts out all pretty, and the soft instruments just lure you in. Then it gets a little more jazzy, and before you know it, bam, there's powerful sounds everywhere. With the bells in the background, the melody just plain rocks out with this song. This is a perfect example of how to make your music slowly get more powerful. Emotions is boring, but it reminds me of N, so thank you so much for putting it on here. <sighs> this song is simple, but it knows how to get its feelings across. I'd say the piano is one of my favorite instruments, and I love the way that it's just softly used here. It's almost silent in a way, letting the emotions shine through. Then the strings join in. 
What an amazing combination. After listening to the melody a few times, it becomes so recognizable because of how short and sweet it is. This might even be more effective than the last segment. Sinnoh had some great changes from the day to night music, but this is by far one of the greatest examples. Sinnoh's Pokemon League music only has one instrument in it really, but Game Freak knows how to do a lot with a little. Sometimes music can just give you indescribable feelings, and this song is a perfect example of that. In fact, I am giving credit to a YouTuber out there by the name of the Alpha Geeks. This song cured his depression. It started out when he began middle school and lasted until about 10th grade. He was unable to feel any happiness. This was due to a condition that he was suffering from. Most people would just break down and give up after a few years, but he kept on pushing. And then, he finally listened to Sinnoh's Pokemon League music during the night. Something about the feelings given by this music caused him to break into tears after four years of not being able to do so. This just goes to show you that Game Freak's potential goes through the roof. I sure respect those guys. I mean, they practically did save someone's life after all. Of course I had to. No, it's not on here because Gen 1 King of All represent Pikachu Charizard. Generation 1 is toxic, remember? That beat, so perfect, and the melody just welcomes you into a lifelong journey. It's easy going, fun to dance to, and I have no idea how the Game Boy made that instrument at the end work, but it is fantastic. Come on, Pokemon fans, you can do it. It's your birthday. No, I'm out. No one wants to join your stupid party.
It ruined you. No, no, not not really. In my opinion, I adore electronic music, and this instrument works amazingly well with the cool yet mysterious sounds of Route 113. That drum in the background gets you pumped, and the best part about this magnificent track is the harmony. One nice instrument ain't enough. How about another? Mmm, just a delicious sandwich. Everyone has that song, the song that means something very special to them. For Fawful's Minion, it's traveling about on a journey of memories. For The Tree's Apprentice, it's the ruby, sapphire, and emerald credits. For me, that song is a spurious city. Think about what Black and White 2 did as games. You practically revisited an entire game and proved even further. You get to see some new interesting places mixed with the nostalgia of getting to see how much everything else has changed. You complete the conquest of Black and White Kirim. You view the stand of a new champion. You go down the East Road traveling what was once the very beginning of the previous games. And you take a peek inside what no one else realizes was your original Unova home. Then you go back to Aspersia and this heartwarming piece greets you. Black and White 2 feels so much more complete with this track alone. The more it goes into the track, the more feels you get. It has that home feeling mixed with the reimagining that Aspersia did. When I hear this track, I think of that cliff you can see from your hometown. I think of everything that happened in the credits. I think of this entire journey. And most of all, I think of my birthday party from two years ago. I was visiting across the country with a few faraway friends and family. And for most of my birthdays, that has never had the chance to happen. The Aspersia City track was playing in my head the whole day. It was the perfect track for a day like that. But overall, I think the top four songs on my list are a little better at what they do.
lot of Pokemon fans have songs from the older games where they love how it was remade. Route 113 was an example of that, but this is an even better example. National Park was always one of the most beautiful songs in the series, but then you enter this place in the remix and... Dead piano solo! Already no other song in the series is like this, and it's only the beginning. You really do feel as if you're lying in the middle of an angelic garden with nature thriving around you. Then the other instruments come in. Everything is pushed to the limit with this track, and the lasting beauty is remarkable. Black and White 1, the greatest storyline in the main series, at least for me, and most other people. The credits theme perfectly sums up what happens towards the ending. For the first time ever, they don't end with a typical champion battle. No, this time, White Castle, don't vomit, it's, it's addicting, like eating Jesus. That legendary battle. The battle with N afterwards, with the war going on between the two legendary mascots. Then his father steps in, and he, he really needs psychological help. You beat him, and N is finally free from his abusive grasp. You both fly off on your legendary mascots, and kapow! This music just strikes you like a slap on the chin. Strong-sounding drums keep the beat, while the melody plays what I can only describe as pure victory. This is definitely one of the most satisfying credits themes I have ever heard. And there's also a cool solo. <laughs> yeah. I broke the camera!
think about how far the Pokemon franchise has gotten. We started out with no colors, then we got 3D sprites, then actual cinematic cutscenes, and now we have Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, some of the most detailed games in Pokemon existence. This song represents that for me. An improved yet nostalgic Hoenn region, the Delta episode, more challenging battles, everything Gen 6 brought to the table. And then there's this. You can finally see what flying to another location actually looks like, all the while listening to the most relaxing piece of Pokemon music I can think of. The charming melody of the daytime version is still there, but there is no feeling like flying around a continent from your childhood at night as everyone else has their windows lit up like small candles in a distance. Not to mention you've got music like this to go along with the gorgeous night sky. Each music takes its own turn with its unique part. It makes me proud that Game Freak has gotten this far into our future. You knew we had to do this. Let's have a recap. Number 100, Black City. Number 99, Battle Dome during a competition. Number 98, Joint Avenue. Number 97, Outside the Battle Tower in Crystal. Number 96, Castelia Gym. Number 95, Arcus Battle. Number 94, it gets us battle in Black 2 and White 2. Number 93, Pokeathlon Dome with Game Boy Sounds. Number 92, ho Battle. Number 91, Outside Reversal Mountain. Number 90, Celadon City in Red, Blue, and Yellow. Number 89, Cyrus Battle. Number 88, Nuvema Town. Number 87, Cerulean City with Game Boy Sounds. Number 86, Lavender Town in Gold, Silver, and Crystal. Number 85, the bike theme in Black, White, Black 2, and White 2. Number 84, Silph Co. in Red, Blue, and Yellow. Number 83, the gym theme in Heart, Gold, and Soul, Silver. Number 82, Hugh Battle. Number 81, Successor, Karina. Number 80, Accumula Town with the Band. Number 79, Sleepport City in Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. Number 78, Route 2 in Gold, Silver, and Crystal. Number 77, the Gym Leader Battle in X and Y. Number 76, Route 4 in Black and White. Number 75, Sutopolis City in Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. Number 74, Saffron City in Gold, Silver, and Crystal. Number 73, Village Bridge with the Band. Number 72, Job Life City in Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum. Number 71, Victory Road in Gold, Silver, and Crystal. Number 70, Icarus City with the Dancers. Number 69, Game Corner in Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum. Number 68, The Balance Trio Battle. Number 67, Professor Rowan at the Hall of Fame. Number 66, Violet City in Gold, Silver, and Crystal. Number 65, Route 111 in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. Number 64, The Elite Four Battle Theme in Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. Number 63, Brune Path. Number 62, Viridian City in Red, Blue, and Yellow. Number 61, Surf Theme in Gold, Silver, and Crystal. Number 60, Route 224. Number 59, Route 26 in Heart, Gold, and Soul, Silver. Number 58, Cinnabar Island in Fire, Red, and Leaf, Green. Number 57, Iris Battle in Black 2 and White 2. Number 56, SS Aqua in Gold, Silver, and Crystal. Number 55, Gym Leader's Last Pokemon in Black 2 and White 2. Number 54, Mewtwo Battle in X and Y. Number 53, Route 225. Number 52, Goldenrod City in Heart, Gold, and Soul, Silver. Number 51, Route 209. Number 50, Dragon Spiral Tower. Number 49, Inside Reversal Mountain in Black 2. Number 48, Kanto Gym Leader Battle in Gold, Silver, and Crystal. Number 47, Grand... Grand... It's written Grande, but I'm going to say Grand Valleyway, okay? Number 46, Giratina Battle in Platinum. Number 45, Indigo Plateau in Heart, Gold, and Soul, Silver. Number 44, Olivine Lighthouse in Heart, Gold, and Soul, Silver. Number 43, Six Island. Number 42, Blue Battle in Fire, Red, and Leaf, Green. Number 41, Viridian Forest in Fire, Red, and Leaf, Green. Number 40, Route 110 in Omega, Ruby, and Alpha, Sapphire. Number 39, Lance Battle in Heart, Gold, and Soul, Silver. Number 38, Steven Battle in Omega, Ruby, and Alpha, Sapphire. Number 37, Route 42 in Gold, Silver, and Crystal. Number 36, Final N Battle. Number 35, Sea and Wood City in Heart, Gold, and Soul, Silver. 
Number 34, Contest Hall in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. Number 33, Pallet Town in Gold, Silver, and Crystal. Number 32, Water Labyrinth. Number 31, Sunny Shore City at Night. Number 30, Dark Cave in Gold, Silver, and Crystal. Number 29, Route 119 in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. Number 28, Route 3 in Red, Blue, and Yellow. Number 27, Snowbell City. Number 26, SSN in Fire, Red, and Leaf Green. Number 25, Meteor Falls in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. Number 24, Game Corner in Gold, Silver, and Crystal. Number 23, Deoxys Battle in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. Number 22, Suicune Battle in Heart, Gold, and Soul, Silver. Number 21, Deontha Battle. Number 20, Eterna Forest. Number 19, Pixie Trio Battle in Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum. Number 18, The Credit Steam in Red, Blue, and Yellow. Number 17, Soaring in the Sky. Or Soaring in Sky, as some people call it. I don't know. Number 16, The Trainer Battle Theme in Fire, Red, and Leaf Green. Number 15, The Dive Theme in Omega, Ruby, and Alpha Sapphire. Number 14, Cynthia Battle in Black 2 and White 2. Number 13, Dripville City. Number 12, the credits in Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. Number 11, the credits in Black 2 and White 2. Number 10, Route 216. Number 9, Unwavering Emotions. Number 8, Pokemon League at Night. Number 7, the main theme. Number 6, Route 113. Number 5, the Spursha City. Number 4, National Park and Park Gold and Soul Silver. Number 3, the credits in Black and White. Number 2, Soaring in the City. 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 The Sky at Night. There's been the beauty of soaring in the night sky. Memories have taken place like they did with the Spursha City. Instruments have combined like they did with Route 216. What remaining song from the main series could possibly combine all of this? Look, you might have been expecting this. Number one is Route 10 from Black and White. Look, yeah, you saw it coming, I know. Look, there it is right there. I don't care. I don't care. This piece of music is so symbolic. It plays right when you're heading towards the Pokemon League itself, but at the same time, knowing the fate of the entire region is in your hands. Good thing you got a song like this to back you up. And the melody comes from an accordion of all instruments. Well, save your limbo dance for later, because this accordion knows precisely what it's doing. The melody is a tiny bit emotional because you're towards the end of your championship quest, but because of what you have up ahead, at the same time it's so exciting, and then the flutes come flying in through the window. They build upon what we've already heard, back to the accordion with a finale that takes you for a ride. And this whole time, we've got these strings in perfect harmony with everything. I don't care if it comes from something like this. Y yeah, what is this, a suitcase? I don't know. I am Lightning Manectric, and I still consider Black and White's Route 10 to be the greatest piece of music in the main series of Pokemon. Thank you, Game Freak. Thank you, all my Pokemon teams. 
And thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe. <laughs> These might not be my clothes, but I am still holding them. They belong in a museum because they probably belong to someone related to me. And obviously, I'm the most famous person on earth. We goes the kangaroo.